Hello, friends. First of all, I would like to wish everyone a very happy new year. And on this occasion, let's take a pledge or make a resolution to make our nation, our India, free of electrical and fire accidents. Let's make India a safe place to live in. Let's educate and aware people about the importance of electrical and fire safety regulation already in place. I am back with a very crucial topic, fire in multi-story buildings, case studies with respect to Bhushan Bhagwan Mani sir. If you look at the reports of NCRB ADSI reports 2020-22, the total deaths in last year was 4,30,000. And out of these, the contribution of fire was 1.8 and electrocution was 3%. When I say 1.3%, that means around 7,400 deaths were attributed because of fire and there were around 7,500 cases reported in the last year. If you say in very simple terms, that is a 20 cases in a day on average. Similarly, electrocution contribution is 3%, I already told, and there are around 1,200 deaths and 75,000 people who suffer because of that 12,000 deaths in a year. The matter of surprise is that despite various efforts at various level, such accidents, in fact, the painful accidents, heart-wrenching accidents are not stopping at all. Rather, if you look at the figure of uh, NCRB, if you compare it with the previous year, there is an increase of 8.3%. Dear all, it's a high time to wake up. Make people aware and educate. Let's use the old technology, latest technology available and use appropriate well-designed appliances, equipments, implement it without any compromise. The list is quite long. Time to give thanks and introduction of today's speakers. I always say it's a long journey and every journey starts with a single step and I will be failing in my duty if I don't say the thanks to almighty, my mentors, my good wishers, my parents, my wife, my son who has contributed a lot, my mentors, Start the that list start with respected PP Bhai Sahab, Anjuli Chandra Ma'am, KK Murthy Sir, NK Mittal Sahab, P. Ramachandran Sir, S. Pao Sir, Hitesh Chuhanji, Dr. Kamal Bansal Sir, my friends and well wishers, Saket Gupta Ji, Dinesh Singh Ji, S. K. Batra Ji, last but not the least, my team working 24 into 7 for making such webinar to happen includes Gulab and Ram Dhani. Time to give a brief, very brief introduction about today's speaker, very respected Bhushan Bhagwan Mankami sir. He has completed his B from Mumbai University with fourth rank. Presently, he is a NFE Regional Director of Western Region. He is a member of ESHRE. He's an active trainer for SRA K-12 college training program and he was the leading member in state government's electrical safety week program, conducting over 50 programs in schools. And he has designed well few electrical safety audit tenders for semi-government bodies also. He's a person who inspected 50 hospitals during COVID-19 pandemic and he's a working with state government electrical inspector wing for last 25 years. Last but not the least, the thing I like about him is a, he's a student of electrical safety. Love to make people aware and educate like me. Time to hand over this stage to Bhushan sir and make this stage on your fire with your topic, very important topic, that is fire in multi-story buildings, a case studies. Over to you, sir. Welcome. Thank you, Aurora, sir. Firstly, thank you for giving me this opportunity, rather pulling me down from my uh, sleeping state and come out and give this, uh, uh, prepare this presentation. Uh, this topic is quite close to my heart as it is for you, because uh, I've been going in the field 
going at the actual site feeling the pain and the grief people are facing after such electrical fires and the sad part is it is not stopping rather the count is growing so it's high time that a community like us who are already enlightened and ignited i can say have to take a step ahead for the awareness also for the implementation of the rules and regulations those are already there getting revised after 10 15 years every time but when it comes to implementation when it comes to actual execution there are still problems so let us understand the problem first nicely so that we can solve it in a better manner we, uh, we are having better idea about the execution issues and the solutions the only gap is spreading the right knowledge at right time at right people so uh, i am happy to be part of igniting power engineers we are all, already doing some work through national federation of engineers for electrical safety mumbai chapter has been formed there are few other chapters i think delhi chapter you are also a member over there and uh, so this message spreading thing has started and i am happy to be part of both the organizations where welcome. i can do a active role welcome yeah. so uh, without wasting uh, for the time uh, should we continue uh, yeah, start yeah, with please. our yes yes please yeah. start your presentation so uh, give me permission to share my screen yes please Uh, sir is the presentation visible properly yes yes please continue am i audible yes you are audible yeah so uh, let's start high rise building fires how many times you have heard this i remember my childhood when i used to have a black and white pc tv uh, if someone remembers that period in that news used to come at around 7:30 pm and it was only during the diwali period we could heard that there is some fire at some in place some incident occurred it was only around that period so what has changed from my childhood to now at my this age this is rapid urbanization rapid industrialization people have moved from their rural places to cities and a demand of housing has rise like anything and that obviously led to increase in construction of high rise building and the immediate next requirement is the electrical infrastructure requirement for these buildings right from the licensee level where you have to have a, a substation where you can have a adequate power up to your high rise building secondly even at in the high rise building your meter room your cable incoming cable and the other infrastructure that demand is also rising so let us understand why these things are happening see i have some other view about all these things so i would like to highlight the missing links why these things are actually happening before going ahead just uh, let us have some uh, information what is the situation right now so the first uh, slide shows that in mumbai where the city where i am living the financial capital last year's news is the fires are rising it is around 22% 
15 to 22 percent that is what they are saying so this is a natural rise due to this immediate requirement of the housing this are reflected to this situation as i was saying i vividly remember when i got face to face interaction with this problem high rise building fires have different dimensions or there are different sectors in that first i would like to highlight about the internal house fires let us dive into the subject properly and understand the different aspects of high rise building fires the first thing i want to highlight is the internal fire in the flats it was exactly march 2018 when i had to visit a location where a high rise building apartment got fire and there i noticed some peculiar thing if you are aware maharashtra government has given stamp duty exemption for 500 square foot flat so these builders came out with different ideas to have a 500 square foot flat eight flat could be built and each two flats can be combined into one flat of 1000 square feet but when the electrification comes each 500 square feet flat will have 2 meters and so a combined flat of 1000 square feet which is given to the end consumer has ultimately have 2 meters this is the classic example of such kind of lo location it was particularly i remember i visited location in andheri where same day two such incident had happened that just strike my mind that okay this is a serious issue which has not been discussed not been talked about so these these here if you find this section is a uh, one section of 500 square feet and this is another section of 500 square feet now this is a converted 1000 square feet flat here is the living room there is one uh, bedroom over here and there's a second bedroom over here the incidents that i am talking of electrical fire that happened in such a way that uh, the family was sleeping at in their bedroom one bedroom was kids bedroom another bedroom was the uh, where the parents were sleeping at midnight around 2 uh, o'clock fire started in the living room if you remember i am telling you that there are two different flats combined so there were two three phase meters allotted for this flat which were look uh, with the mains four pole mcb located at this central location there's a kitchen here there's a living room and the the bath uh, the two bedrooms are on this side at this particular instant at 2 pm the fire starts at living room and the smoke starts generating accumulating in the living room what happens then one of the mcbs get stripped because the circuit has been affected due to fire and the other section is still live both the bedrooms are still live fortunately the lady from the house the lady from the bedroom of parents bedroom came out to have a glass of water as she opened the door she noticed that there is lot of smoke in the area and she came out to the living room she saw there is a great amount of fire and she immediately rushed to the door she opened the door went to the lift she got down to the ground floor informed the watchman and immediately she returned from the lift to her floor again she entered the home 
she knocked the doors of the other bedroom she took out the kids and her uh, husband and all of them somehow were able to evacuate the location to come out of the fire location but by that time the husband got suffocated due to the black smoke if you uh, uh, if you know uh, when electrical cables get burned you get carbon monoxide and uh, a thick uh, smoke black smoke comes if that get in, gets into your breathing section a uh, choking takes place and uh, you, you are into an uncomfortable position where your breathing is affected to a greater extent so he got choked up but somehow they managed to come down and later the fire brigade were called and the fire was extinguished the similar incident happened at another location near andheri station and that gave me an insight about this kind of location that cl clubbing flats is okay but you can have a single meter for your flat say in case is if this flat had only single meter the the supply would have tripped for the complete home and the ac would have been switched off or in a, it would have got into non working condition and they would have understood about the fire much earlier and the disaster would have been avoided so this is a peculiar thing that has uh, taught me a lesson that what should be done in such kind of location the second thing about high rise building fires is which is most common in uh, mumbai and around and even in other metropolitan cities is meter room fire it's a vital point because we always face this in the urban section See, this is a kind of typical meter room where supply company has given a sfu switch fuse unit this is the incoming cable a bus bar of say 200 ampere or 400 depending on the load of that building is provided over here with copper uh, bus, bus bar and main connections are taken from this and such kind of arrangement is given this is the typical meter room you can see and the particular mains going to the flat are laid like this they go into a electrical duct and to the particular flats up now let us identify the issues around it there are some peculiar issues in this so this is an example of a flat uh, two pole mcb that has been provided it is of 32 ampere it's a single phase uh, uh, meter and the outgoing supply what happens is uh, in the particular flat if the wiring internal wiring is not of adequate size if it is under size and your mcb is still a 32 ampere mcb or a higher rated mcb the load rises in a particular flat it also reflects at the main switch down with the cable rising its temperature slowly main cable and also the cable inside the flat the pvc wire inside the flat which is supplying a particular load where a load has been increased above the limit and a higher current is flowing through that wire nothing trips because your ocpd the tripping device is of higher rating the overcurrent keeps on flowing and it gives its thermal effects and you may find a burning incidence or a fire incident near the main switch or 
at the inside the flat where the particular cable is getting loaded or a particular location as shown over here. This is the electrical duct. And what has happened is there are joints near the duct. This is the particular location where joints are made. And this is coming, this is just at the first floor from the meter. Meter is at the ground floor. First floor duct is this, and there are joints over here. Now what happens is the load gets on reflecting on the cable and even at the joints, the temperature keeps on rising. So as to that the burning starts. So there are three locations where burning can take place inside the flat or the main switch where uh, near the meter room where the uh, mains is coming out or the location in duct where the joints have been carried out. See, you can see the particular thermography uh, image where temperature is at around 87. It rises up to 140 or above also and ultimately it turns into a fire incident. See, uh, there is general tendency of electrical wiremen to coil the joint. This is a particular location where the uh, uh, PVC wire, mains wire has been coiled in the duct. The, uh, though the image shows temperature is very less, but it rises when there is a higher load at the circuit of the particular flat. And this gets the burn. This gets uh, starts the fire, ignites the fire. Having said about the internal fires and the meter room fires, we'll talk about the meter room fires uh, in other angles in the coming slides where I'll talk about the sanctioning level. Now here I'm making a bold statement. Isn't it? I'm predicting future. Am I strong enough? Am I knowledgeable enough? To make such statement, let us see further if I am really that uh, whatever I'm saying or what I'm stating is correct. This is, these are real life images from my city. Now, as I told you that there, there are space constraints and there is huge demand of housing. It has turned into new ideas where builders can space Builders can save their space and use it for some other facilities that has to be provided by them. The municipal corporations in Mumbai and in my city have made it compulsory to give adequate parking arrangement for the high-rise building which is getting proposed. Now you have a limited space and you want more and more flats to be available for selling that immediately implies to a parking arrangement with minimum square feet area of utilization. This has given rise to podium parking and now it has turned into rotational mechanical parking as it is shown in this image. This is the actual image which I am highlighting and this is the proposed project where you can see there are residential apartments up to the higher floors and exactly on the same floor on the opposite side there is parking arrangement. Are we really into a comfortable situation where you can say that uh, there will not be any fire taking place? I dare to say no, because there are recent incidences where a BMC parking lot, a car, a electrical car got fire and it also ignited fire in the around uh, nearby eight vehicles and the fire rise fire, fire ignite 
lot of things nearby so this is the coming scenario which we have to deal hey but is it an hypothetical situation that i'm talking about well i'm not so this is the incident that has been that has actually happened in my city that is thane where this this particular location that is uh, orion mall on the godbandar road it got burned how this uh, fire took place in the high rise uh, mall you can see there is a parking lot just in front of the location commercial location the fire started in this parking lot and the fire was so the car started burning one car got the fire it ignited fire in other cars and the it the fire erupted so fast that the flame started jumping from the parking lot to the commercial space which is around uh Six to seven meters away, and the flames jumped, and they ignited these locations at first floor. Then the fire was transferred to second floor, then third, then fourth, and it continued. Why I'm talking of this location? just a minute technical glitch why i am talking of this location because this location is very beloved to me you can see down over here this is a fitness gym where i go i used to go and so uh, i was so shocked that the location where i go every day is also under the fire for such a negligence so these things are real it is not that i am taking something out of my imagination these things are happening and these things are going to happen so you better have some idea to deal with it so this was the future of my uh building where i used to go for the gymming complete building got burnt fire brigade took two days to completely wipe out the fire from this location isn't it the thing that i am talking is real and it's the danger in the coming future everyone agrees i feel i'm not able to see in the cases so so now that the next thing that i want to highlight is see if it is actually the situation right now there have been national electric code available it has been updated now 2023 code is available ca regulation 2010 were there now they have been updated with ca regulation 2023 are available is 732 is available national building code 2016 is available so all sorts of information for this high rise building to be safe and to be properly electrified material is available standards are available only there are some missing links why this is not happening and it is leading to so many fire incidences so let's move on to this missing link that i feel may be relevant so this is where i feel are the missing links so this is a particular image that i have developed that there are seven missing links in all this let me explain you one by one so uh, one to four are before handover of the project like from the initial design of the project and 5 6 7 hours uh, after the project has been handover to the uh, 
society these missing links are at present there so let me come one by one so first point that i want to share is the design aspect design aspect when it comes to design national building code 2016 has given clear cut guidelines about the clearances the location of the substation the laying of the uh, cables the i732 has elaborated details about the electrical installation that has to be done also about the calculation that has to be supported so things are available as i was saying but what is this p that i'm talking about what is this p what is this red missing link i'm talking about p is the plan approval at the electrical inspector or the state government body when it goes for plan up it nowadays it has been observed that plan approval doesn't come at the government body at the early stage it only comes when the project project is near completion or the final stage of the project has come so where i'll where we will check for the nec um, compliance where we'll check for the is code compliance it is only at the end no there is a provision that plan approval should be taken by each project before commencing the project but this has been conveniently forgotten by the builder lobby if i can say that second point is the execution what has been observed uh, recently that when the execution of the project start the actual installation of the project start the time binding or the time limit to complete that installation plays a vital role so everything is bought in hurry bari and while executing the things like laying the cables having the uh, cable duct uh, completing the elect internal electrical installation things are done so fast and uh, rather the design aspect which is actually available at the design stage is not actually being followed in the execution stage uh, that has been a common observation so what is this second link that i am talking second missing link that i am talking this is v v is the validation of the project before going for the final charging or the final approval validation of the project is very important whether the execution has been taken place as per the design and uh, as per the standards and codes available this validation is very important but as i said the timeline of the project closing of the thing selling of the available <coughs> pardon me <coughs> pardon me. selling of the <coughs> available uh, square feet area this pressure takes over everything and the second link that is that is always forgotten that there is no testing before there is no testing before the project goes for the charging permission a is the approval stage now for the approval stage particular things are happening let me be very clear about it not always the electrical consultant goes for the approval stage there are so called middlemen are available who submit the proposal and as the technical discussion starts everything fails because they are just 
a middleman to submit the proposal. Thus, at this particular level where project will get the charging permission and it will be converted into a live installation ready for the sale, the adequate information, the adequate load calculation, the short circuit calculation, the, uh, the testing of available ELCBs and RCCBs or MCBs that have been installed in the high-rise building is not available or it is not submitted at the approval stage. And with this timeline pressure, these approvals are achieved and we are ready with the installation which is not tested, not validated and, and the problem are there inside which are just overlooked and the installation goes for charging. Even though suggestions are made at this approval level, <coughs> the implementation is always missed out. Now everything is said and done. Now project has been uh, given charging permission. The meter room has been charged. The supply has been uh, duly given by the like uh, uh, licensee. Now the pro uh, the project is handed over to the cooperative housing society, which is uh, formed immediately later. And by that time, this uh, society takes over. And after a few years, the regular maintenance starts. At this maintenance level, this missing link. I have shown. What is that missing link? What is this L that I have written? This is the common missing link available now. This is also leading to the scenario of these fires that we are showing in these slides. This L is for the licensed electrical contractor. See, your building is having a 11 kV or 22 kV supply. Then there is a distribution of 440 volt meters, single phase meters. You have firefighting installation. You have DG sets. There is a solar panel above. It's, it's a <coughs> big integrated high rise building installation. Not any Tom, Dick, Harry can come and do the adequate maintenance. There has to be a reputed licensed electrical contractor having adequate experience of handling such installations where a multi-angle approach is available or required. So this link is very vital. So wherever for maintenance activity, uh, adequate licensed contractor or chartered electrical safety engineer should be approached so that the installation stays in a intact, electrically safe, intact level. So after this maintenance point, what is the next missing link? After the society takes over, the periodic checks or the safety audits <coughs> is uh, plays vital role because a safety audit is just like having the blood test at uh, 48 and to check whether your sugar is okay, your CBC is okay, your hemoglobin is okay. If you don't check your health at periodic level, it is quite obvious that suddenly you will land into hospital where uh, your you are uh, advised by a ca cardiac specialist that your cholesterol has gone so high. Why you came so late? Now we have to operate immediately. This situation is even possible in electrical installation if it is not periodically checked for the electrical faults. So even at this stage, this L, licensed electrical contractor or uh, agency 
who is adequately qualified to carry out such periodic checks or safety audits is very important. Now what is what is happening is <coughs> any regular stamp holder license contractor is called his ability to check the things as per the norms as per the regulations and getting a real advice for the management committee is not done because for that a specialized experienced knowledge person is required if a checking is done through such an agency which is having adequate experience then out of this safety audit activity or a periodic check activity actual required results can be gained now the next link that i want to highlight is the last point seventh point after aging of this electrical installation or after aging of this high rise building quite important things lie to check whether the building right now is safe to occupy those important things are the fire drills and the evacuation deal, drills pardon me these things are also conveniently bypassed the real situation in mumbai is well known how this these two vital points are being bypassed and that is leading to a disastrous situation and then the all fingers are pointed at non working firefighting system but have you ever checked up that firefighting system have you ever checked about the evacuation thing that has to be done have you ever done the real electrical safety audit so that <coughs> no undue incidence of short circuit and fire takes place the answer lies with the community at large so moving on to the next point so uh, as i was talking the design level and the approval level so high rise building proposals are prepared by the consultants the percentage i don't want to debate actually or i don't want to describe because it is vague there are few consultants who actually take the cognizance of national electric code they also check for the short circuit calculation they also check for the nitty gritties required as per the as per the pardon me just a minute i'll, I'll be back the so pardon me uh somebody came at the door so, so uh, as i was talking high rise building proposals approvals process the proposal is prepared by the consultant and it comes at uh, electrical inspector right few consultants make adequate calculations and the data which is to be presented for the validation of the provisions that has been given in the project but not all consultants are able to do that they hire a middleman this is a particular form <coughs> which is submitted as an application as you notice a uh, few two requirements have been mentioned <coughs> test report by lec load details agreement letter by lec and builder that is uh, agreement between both of them to make the electrical installation as per regulations and the licensed electrical contractor stands liable 
for any non following of the rules that agreement annexure is also been mentioned over here acceptance of the letter for the uh, by the contractor letter of the material used and its certificate so it has been clearly mentioned that the material that is getting used at this particular high rise building is higher standard and for the switches and the cables that are getting used in this installation the cer testing certificates of these should be submitted along with the proposal so at this stage i would request the fraternity to add few things in while taking this proposal the regulation 38 says that frls or low halogen smoke cable should be used so these particular things should also be verified mentioned somewhere that the proposal should provide these details also another important thing that nec 2023 clause 4.5.4 and even at other location it has been mentioned that earth for loop impedance of the location should be checked so if at initial proposal level or the approval stage if these details are demanded it will be a handy thing for the approving authority to verify the standard tns system equipotential bonding cable resistances all these details if demanded at this approval stage that will provide a nap on the practices where insufficient data is given and approval is demanded next point having said lot about electrical fires some missing lines and this i have been inspired by people like dr arora Uh, he included me in the group every morning i open my mobile i see some of the other video dr arora is taking pledge dr arora is going here dr arora is showing fault loop impedance some of the other thing gopa kumar sir the one who formed nfe national federation of electrical engineers for safety he is also traveling from one place to another he is having his good business still he is promoting this idea of implementation of national electrical code 2023 and ce regulation 2023 he is giving his own efforts he is having his own business still is doing that is quite an inspirational task stuff apart from these people i have some more ins in inspiration who is that inspiration and why let us understand why so i am inspired by this 10 year old girl this is actually a old old incident happened in 2018 why i am inspired by this girl this particular high rise building fire took place in a place called suburb called parel in mumbai this girl was staying on 16th floor with her family fire erupted below her residence few floors below and fire started coming up and this 10 year old girl such a small girl in this panic situation she kept her nerve not only that she went out of her house she knocked the door of the neighbors called all the elderly people inside her home as the smoke was rising 
it was uncomfortable for everybody to breathe <clears throat> she closed the door and put some obstacles at the door and she asked everyone to go into the balcony and sit down she didn't stop there she she asked everyone to have a wet towel on their face rather on their nose and breathe so that the black smoke black thick smoke that is coming out of this fire doesn't choke their respiratory system isn't it a brave move in a fire situation can you show this kind of caliber and it is not the last thing this was taught to jain sadavarte 2 3 years back during the bmc fire drill program at her school so in this panic situation she recalled that training that has taken place that awareness program that has taken place and she was able to implement it was possible just because there was some awareness program and this girl was able to show her bravery she even won, uh, won the president's uh, medal for the bravery so these things are so she is my role model and so I, that gives me the inspiration so let us create this awareness connect safety speak about safety talk about the safety implementation at each location and let's make electrically electrical safe nation i have many more points actually but uh, some uh, other day i will come out with other slides and highlight about the high rise building other fires today we just uh, concluded around the residential electrical fires there are uh, i have some slides about um, hospital fires and the issues around that next time whenever um, arora sir gives me an opportunity we'll go come with that so these are the missing links that i was talking about and i will take a pledge that i will give my best to close this missing links to make my nation electrically safe thank wow. you wow. one wow. and all thank you oh wow so what a great presentation from your side i don't have exact word to express the word i don't have exact word to say what to say about the presentation you have made you have made everything astonished with your presentation and hats off to you and uh, i don't want to miss that opportunity, opportunity with you to make people take a pledge with me also because you are already given that let's let's, let's stand for a minute and i request everyone to stand up for a minute and take a pledge i take a pledge that i will not neglect any safety rules and regulations in place and i will try my level best to make my country my nation a safe country to live in and i also make people aware about the importance of safety and fire regulations in place and definitely one day we will make our india our nation free of electrical and fire accidents with efforts of everyone thank you thank you everyone thanks a lot thank you everyone for taking pledge with me that was a very right occasion very right time and uh, now i would like to invite pp vice up first to say few words about the session ramdhan ji kindly unmute vice up yeah uh, rajesh ji yes sir 
Jay Sri and my friends, uh, happy new year, new year to all of you. This is a great uh, event at the very start of the new year. Hats off to Rajesh ji and hats off to Bhushan Bhagwan ji. Bhagwan ji, Bhagwan ji, his name is is present there, and I think he will bless us also, God. And we are starting with the right uh, right mission, right. Uh, you see our uh, enthusiasm to push things up and uh, before i before i appreciate uh, about the about the uh, today's presentation i always feel pleasure to uh, put my words of appreciation for rajesh ji because i have seen him coming up in the last uh, 12 years how he has how he has uh, come up and how he has he has done his phd how how he has started taking care of the of the safety aspects the country uh, badly needs as a, his mission how he is doing and very rightly said by bhushan ji is a real source of inspiration um, uh, dr rajesh aroda for every one of us and uh, i think we we must strive hard and do our best to join him see that see that whatever uh, the objective he has set forth for all of us and that is very very uh, nicely and very quickly achieved so that is uh, that is my words of appreciation for uh, arora ji and now coming uh, to uh, bhushan bhagwan ji he has done the wonderful uh, wonderful present presentation i too don't have words to put it for for him it was excellent and par excellence rather you see uh, presentation uh exactly he has done it in a, such a nice way uh he's uh, made the made the spot spot uh, short snapshots he has made the nice presentation for us to 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 pick up the things very quickly and very patiently he has delivered the his lecture uh, which was easy to understand he has he has what i appreciate is that he has really uh, given us the practical experience uh, going to the various fire sites witnessing them you see catching those uh, pictures how the how the fire it took place in the in the flats how it took place in the mall how the electrical cars got the fire how it has so that gives us really a boost to to uh, to uh, capture the things uh, better so not only that <clears throat> i'm more than impressed with the with the way he has brought out the missing links you see uh, the various steps you see for uh, uh, fire rise uh, building to come up so he has beautifully uh, done the the things which we exactly needed was the missing links normally we 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 find the missing links are not there but he has seven components he has that normally we we are li limited to design execution and testing and charging but uh, the aspects there after the three important aspects the maintenance periodical checks the safety orders and the fire drills uh, excellent job you see you have done it and you have given us the as the way uh, to move on uh, still in the days to come how to move uh, in a very nice lucid manner on those uh, missing links i really really salute you for that so you have worked really very hard and uh, god bless i think uh, you see i request you to kindly <clears throat> uh, do the next presentation the next presentation also as you have you have told us so we'll be very eager to do it all my best wishes for all of you thank you so much thanks a lot thank you sir. thank you sir thank you for those kind words hey, thank you sir thank you very much for your nice sporting word and now i would like to invite my mentor as a bow sir he is also present and kindly unmute and say a few words thank you sir i wanted his reply actually i was to say request <laughs> you that i want apologies yes. sir apologize i didn't tip your name as inspiration apologize on this forum thank you thank you ji uh, first of all i uh, i would like to thank rajesh ji for this uh, wonderful webinar and mm -hmm. uh, first ever uh, webinar uh, i am witnessing from uh, bushan such a great depth of knowledge it's a good thing that ip and nfes are joining hands uh, nothing but our 
great director from a great region, Maharashtra, Mr. Bhushan, has delivered a webinar on this issue. Uh, he has pointed out, it is a, what I can say, it's an integrated approach. We are operating with within glass bottles. Electrical inspectorate operate in a separate entity, and fire service department operate in a separate entity, and municipal authorities, they operate. Then the first thing is the planning, building planning permission authorities. So it is up to the builder who has to organize and observe all these authorities stipulations, whether it is NEC or building planning authorities or fire safety norms or evacuation measures. These are all interlinked. But as rightly pointed out by Mr. Bushan, the, the planning and the initial design, the initial uh, planning is missing to make a synergizing approach between these various uh, uh, authorities. Especially, as you know that uh, more than 40% of fire, especially from Mumbai, these are all nowadays, uh, we are having frequent uh, news of fire. Uh, and mostly 40% of fire are due to electrical causes. And uh, if we observe the electrical alone, most of the fires, at least 40% of the fires could have been avoided. And one of the things, the, what the builder has to do is, uh, there are some earmarked uh, entities uh, stipulated in the planning authorities. For example, open to sky, uh, open area. Uh, those things should not be occupied, whether by a parking lot or by a transformer or by a generator. At the final minute, the builder has to see a place for uh, accommodating his uh, uh, small, small generators, etc. But uh, he has to seek the open to sky, whereby the evacuation in an emergency will be missing. So these are the things that we have to, the builder has to organize from the initial stage itself. If it is not done, then it will become an embarrassment and uh, it will become a, a difficult thing to address these issues in, a, in an emergency situation, he has pointed out. As far as electrical is concerned, there are several measures incorporated, as explained. Uh, very few things are, for example, bus battery. Because fire, in, uh, it is uh, people are suffering, are, the victims are more out of from uh, evacuation as well as the uh, toxicity of uh, fire, fire fumes. So what the regulation 2023 has envisaged is bus bar tanking. We can have bus bar tanking for small uh, flats also. There are 32 amps, 63 amps bus bars available. If you provide that, there's no means of a uh, bunch of cable uh, being laid haphazardly and getting propagation of fire from one floor to another floor. So these are very important issues that should be taken care to comply, not only with the regulation, to comply with the occupant's safety with regard to the fire. That's all uh, what I can say. Yes, already explained initial periodical inspection and uh, the observance of safety norms by various entities. So what I can finally say is that unless we synergize, we observe the protocol or the norms or the standards insisted by various authorities at the initial stage itself, it will become a tougher job at a later stage to, to do away. So that's all what I can say. Thank you, Araraji and Bhushanji for your nice thing. Thank you. I think Mr. Ravi Bhavandi is also there. There's a lot of Maharashtra people who are spreading the uh, housing society's activities. I wish them to come out with a, a good solution along with uh, uh, cooperation or interactions with the uh, stakeholders like uh, municipal authorities and uh, electrical inspectors. Thank, thank you, everyone. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now time to take questions. I request uh, all the participants to raise your hand if you have any questions you want to ask directly to Bhushanji. He is available to answer. You can raise your hand. We will unmute you and give you a chance to ask directly. Apart from any question, any suggestion, any point you want to make, don't take that good opportunity we have right now.
Yes, yes. Ravi ji, please unmute yourself. Raise your hand so that we can understand who is who wants to suggest something. Definitely, we will give you a chance. Uh, he had explained the missing links very well. Yeah. One suggestion I wanted to add in that is documentation. Uh, when the builder is uh, handing over the society, the managing committee should take all the drawings, designs, everything in proper order so yeah. that while doing maintenance work, uh, any contractor will not have any issues. He can refer those documents and if the documentation is made properly, it makes very easy at later stage. This is what my experience over the period of uh, time. Like yes. If there is proper documentation, it makes a lot of difference. Point well so taken. that should be insisted Great, great. by the society committee when they are taking over. Point taken, sir. Great. Uh, Kanji, you want to say something? And Palvi, one by one, please. Mubarak ji, please. You are done. Yes, hello. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Rajesh ji and Mr. Bhushan, it was really a very nice presentation. I really loved it. Uh, and uh, the, especially everybody has already mentioned the missing links wala part was excellent. And all the points are really uh, mentioned very effectively and carefully. One thing I wanted to share, the reason I, I don't have a question because the things are covered really very well. Uh, but what, one thing I wanted to share, when I was in Merchant Navy, we used to have these uh, safety inspections every now and then. Okay, every now and then. Like every month, some inspector is coming for some part of thing. And because of that, uh, the electrical systems and other safety systems on the ship were maintained really very well. Now, now, if you see, if you go in biggest, very good society also anywhere, if you go and see, you will find open wires, jumbled wires, this and that. That is because there is no any external auditor who is coming into the building regularly. So if this thing is implemented, somehow it is made mandatory by uh, the authorities that there should be an inspection by a competent authority every year or whatever may be the schedule then it like it becomes very uh, easy to implement the safety things which we want to do our motive is not to punish uh, someone but rather to uh, have the things in place properly and save lives right yeah. this is one thing i really like and i think it should be uh, uh, implemented and second thing what i observed from that small little girl from 10 year old and i also try to uh, give this uh, training to the schools okay so, because we have seen the activities of NFE, uh, IP, and other uh, uh, electrical engineers body, we are trying to impart knowledge to the society, but we are doing it through the webinars and through the seminars and things, where the audiences who are attended are also electrical engineers or some business people. We are not doing, we are not going forward to teach it to the common people. So in order to reach out, the softest way to reach out is the schools. Because business people like me, you, we don't, will not sit in a lecture. So the easiest way is to go to the schools and colleges and give the responsibility to them to educate these things to their parents. Great, great. Yes. I would like to add one thing here and I would like to share with all the participants here that the IP got opportunity from one of the biggest school in Delhi, in Roni. And we will be going there to educate students with their parents very soon in the next 10 days. Very good, very good. That can be take, uh, taken as a move and an example to exp yeah, yeah, exploit it in the other areas, in the other region. Uh, because of the winter holidays in Delhi and we have planned mm -hmm. for next uh, 10 days. Anytime we will be going there and definitely mm -hmm. there will be huge kind of thing like uh, mm -hmm. animal function. Okay, okay. Very good, very good. So, sir, uh, sir, okay, okay. Very good, sir. So, such, such things uh, should be done in an organized way. People are doing it like there are people doing it like I I have also visited several times in these schools giving some lectures and all those things. But we need to do it in an organized and a planned manner that every school of every category must be covered like some some sort of things we are all uh, having p uh, people from different backgrounds from business background from authorities from the utilities we all can come together and make a system where we can really go and educate 
schools on a some on some platform regularly. Take, take, take. Well point, mm -hmm. well point. Uh, now time to unmute Palavi ji. Please unmute and yeah. Welcome. Put my hand down. Kindly unmute. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Please. Yeah, Happy New Year. Thanks, Dr. Rajesh. And thank you, Bhushan. Uh, really, it was a very nice presentation. Okay. And um, I feel this, there should be volumes and next sessions continuing this. This is a very happening subject taken. So, uh, thanks for that. Uh, generally, we also do a lot of audits span India. But what we have observed is clients conduct the audits because it's mandatory. But when but the rectification part is missing they do the audits but post audit rectification is missing in many cases so even two years earlier which, whichever audit we have conducted the same thing they want the audit just to show the authorities that the audit is done but unfortunately and it's an irony that implementation and rectification of the audits is not done so where we can address this how we as a you know, all people can address it if we can give it a thought. Great, yeah. great point. Thank you. Very well point. Very, well, very, very good. Uh, Sanjeev ji, kindly unmute. And... Welcome. Welcome. Yeah, good evening and happy new year to yeah. everybody. Uh, and thanks for a nice presentation. Very, uh, you know, um, uh, presentation was really touching. Like it is uh, not was. Uh, it is not like that. It is a theoretical presentation. It was very practical in the sense and practical cases. And one of the cases where you were also, you know, going to the gym and the same building got engulfed. So it is very, you know, uh, very, very close to your heart also, okay, that that same building where I used to go every day and the same thing and got burned one day. So uh, that was very uh, eye-opener. My apprehension is that, uh, uh, see, once the builder uh, starts building, and people gets uh, you know booking the flats in the same building they are they are absolutely unaware what is going to happen which type of wiring he is using uh, whether he is following the plan approvals whether he is going uh, for electric uh, proper electrical contractor or not those things he is totally unaware that the person who is going to occupy that flat and uh, he is putting all his money, he is putting all his efforts, uh, he is paying the EMI and he starts paying EMI even when uh, the builder has only put the foundation stones or he is excavating, okay. So what about these, how to take up, you know, uh, awareness and uh, uh, whether what he should look for, particularly for the fire safety, whether that, uh, that builder has taken care or not, whether that premises he is going to live for, you know, lifelong. 30, 40, 50 years, whether those uh, those has been followed or not, how to make them aware well in advance uh, before going to, uh, you know, take the position or whether you can question those builders, uh, whether you have followed these norms or not. No, I am not going to pay you this uh, EMI until unless you, you make me aware that this uh, safety norms has been followed. So... This is the point how we can address or whether it has been addressed in some regulation. I am not very sure. So this was uh, my uh, point. Very good point. Very good. Uh, Bhushan ji, that a very good point. I think we should have one checklist available with all the consumers who are going to buy any flats from contractor. And they have to mark some points in the checklist. This has been done. This has been done. This is to be done. Because very rightly said, when we purchase any flat, we don't have any idea what Absolutely. are the regulations to be followed and how, what are the agencies who are responsible for a particular regulation to be followed. This is the missing link. Apart from the link you have already discussed, this yes. is also a missing link. Absolutely. This is, point is absolutely right. We, we should make a checklist, something like that. So that uh, at least a, a consumer who is not aware about electrical things, at least he understands that the safety things are being followed. Now what is happening that a big advertisement is made and we have this, that, that, but actual validation of the things are not there. 
there are very big projects coming in Mumbai and around. Uh, if you just take one subject, refuge area, the refuge area is, is just being manipulated for the benefit of square foot cell. If an incident takes place and people from upper floor and uh, floor beneath gather in that location, they can't breathe sufficiently. You know, uh, the area is for 100 people and if the floor, 10 floor people are gathering, there are more than 200. They won't be able to stand. How they'll get evacuated, that is a different thing. Even in that situation where smoke is arising from all the location, they are going to get suffocated. I went to one uh, big project over here and out of curiosity, I just asked, that uh, the person salesman who is selling that, I told him, are you comfortable with this refuge area? He, he had a very polished answer available. Sir, this, this reputed consultant so and so so and so has made this design. So everything has been followed. I just told him this calculation, 10 flows, this many, this many. Whether 200 people will be able to stand over there. Yes or no? No, no, no. That has been taken care of. These things are that. These actual things happening around. Actual things happening. Now, time to take the last question from Suandarji. Please unmute. After that, we will end the session. Hello. Good evening to all. Good evening. Namaskar. Uh, Actually, I have some uh, little suggestions uh, regarding that uh, uh, high-rise building. Uh, the, uh, actually, installation, pre-installation uh, checks. Suppose plan approval, then uh, those materials, what has been approved, that needs to be checked. Otherwise, the builder may manipulate mm. and bring some other materials. Okay. Then before charging, it is being done what Bhuswanji uh, told. It has been done, I think. Uh, material, whatever materials, uh, whether it is uh, for, means uh, wearing materials mm. that has been brought or not, that has to be checked. And another suggestion, uh, mock drills. Mock drills, uh, suppose high-rise building, sometimes uh, uh, during the year or the one in once in each quarter, if it can be done, then I, I think people will be acquainted. Suppose some electrical fault is there, or fire is there, it's mock, mock type fire, then how to do, what to do, True. then that should be trained to the people. And uh, another uh, uh, suggestion means, uh, that suggestion I have just come across uh, somewhere, uh, that uh, during the high-rise building fire, some sort of arrangements are being done uh, in the balcony itself. Where in uh, that uh, entire uh, that another path will be uh, created to evacuate evacuation planning. That is uh, somewhere I've seen whether uh, in this group or somewhere uh, that uh, ladder vertical type, ladders that is called like they... that that will be very much helpful because uh, people uh, may use lift. People may uh, means uh, be stocked up uh, normal uh, these things. If that is being mandated, then it will be of great help. Sir has yeah. raised a very valid point actually. And uh, actually, the presentation has been so time and the house was a little bit of So, I have two points actually missed. One is the LPS has been missed. And the other is a valid point that I always say in industry, mein jake bolta hun, which is also applicable for high-rise buildings. Emergency plan. Yes, sir. Yes. Electrical emergency आती है. Yes. तो वहाँ का जो भी electrical maintenance वाला बंदा है, वो engineer है या whatever जो भी उसका post है, electrician है, उनके पास एक ready-made plan होना चाहिए, जैसे evacuation plan रहता ना? Yes, yes. Electrical emergency plan रहना चाहिए. Yes. इसके बारे में अभी तक कोई सोच ही नहीं रहा है. क्योंकि mm -hmm. Emergency आनी ही है तो उसका कुछ plan तो होना चाहिए evacuation yes, plan है उसका हम लोग diagram निकलते हैं वो उसपे लगाते हैं कि यहाँ से निकलो यहाँ से निकलो यहाँ से निकलो but yes. panic situation में electrical hazard का क्या करना है yes, उसका किसी ने सोचा ही नहीं है 
हम लोग इधर भी वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द फायर ऑडिट इलेक्ट्रिकल ऑडिट इट शुड बी मोर वैलिडेटेड तो आपका ये होगा ही नहीं ना बाकी इंसिडेंट है थर्टी परसेंट इंसिडेंट तो उनका अदर रहता है तो so, इसके बारे में किसी ने सोचा ही नहीं है अभी भी आई हैड सम डेटा बट बिकॉज ऑफ द टाइम कंस्टेंट आई कूडेंट यू नो एड इट जो भी ऑडिट्स अभी कंडक्ट हो रहे हैं ना लॉट ऑफ फेक डेटा इज गोइंग एंड इट इज गेटिंग वैलिडेटेड बाय नॉन इलेक्ट्रिकल इंजीनियर यस यस हाउ यू कैन एसेस कि भैया आपका आईआर वैल्यू कितना मेगा ओम होना चाहिए दे आर एक्सेप्टिंग अ वैल्यू ऑफ 0.8 मेगा ओम ओ खाली उधर मेगा ओम लिखा है करके इट हैज बीन एक्सेप्टेड आई हैव प्रूफ्स आल्सो आई वाज टू पोस्ट दैट बट अभी टाइम नहीं मिला एक्चुअली बट इट इज द रियलिटी जस्ट लुकिंग एट दैट स्टैंप ऑफ सम लाइसेंस कॉन्ट्रैक्टर सम दे आर अप्रूविंग द ऑडिट रिपोर्ट्स वेयर एज ही डजंट नो दैट यू हैव टू टेस्ट द अर्थ फॉल्ट लूप इंपिडेंस यू हैव टू टेस्ट द आईआर वैल्यू आईआर वैल्यू इन मेगा ओम and earth resistance in ohm so mm-hmm. there you would find a report where earth resistance is also in mega ohm and it has been approved matlab mm-hmm. abhi hum log electrical engineer hai hum log samajh sakte hai ki isme kitna bada joke hai aur mm-hmm. isme aur ek woh mentioned hai bata do sir aapko point this installation is as per i rules 1956 okay upar likha hai mm-hmm. testing report mega ohm sab mega ohm mein hai कोई भी वैल्यू में होम में है ही नहीं ठीक है ये हो गया नीचे इज राइटिंग अ स्टेटमेंट दैट दिस इंस्टॉलेशन हैज बीन टेस्टेड बाय मी एंड दिस दिस टेस्ट रिजल्ट्स अबाउ आर वैलिड फॉर वन ईयर भैया मैं खुद इलेक्ट्रिकल इंजीनियर जाता हूं तो कल आज का वैल्यू कल नहीं आएगा दे आर राइटिंग इट इज वैलिड फॉर वन ईयर एंड इवन द फायर डिपार्टमेंट इज सेंग यू राइट ओवर देर की दिस सर्टिफिकेट इज वैलिड फॉर वन ईयर दिस इज रबिश दिस इज इलेक्ट्रिकली रबिश ओनली डॉक्यूमेंटेशन पर्पज के लिए हो रहा है आई एट राइट फॉरम ना आई टेक आउट दिस पॉइंट ऑल्सो आई प्रूफ ऑल्सो बट आई टेक इट वेन द टॉपिक कम्स बिकॉज वॉट इज है यू नो द क्लेम इज डिरेक्टली गिवन दैट इलेक्ट्रिकल फायर हो गया सर बट आई फील दूडे प्रेजेंटेशन वॉज आई ओपनर एंड दैट वॉज द बिगनिंग एंड दिस इज द वेरी फर्स्ट स्टेप ऑफ थाउजेंड स्टेप वी हैव टू टेक एंड दैट सीरीज विल कंटिन्यू विद भूषण जी एंड डेफिनेटली वी विल गेट मोर चांस टू मीट हिम अगेन विद न्यू प्रेजेंटेशन विद न्यू थॉट विद दैट आई वुड लाइक टू से थैंक यू एवरी वन ऑल द पार्टिसिपेट विश एवरी वन अगेन हैप्पी न्यू ईयर थैंक यू सर थैंक यू Thank you. Thank you.